York oil baron by the name of Robert Belfer has lost billions of dollars getting scammed. Not once, not twice, but three times. Three times. Third time's a charm. Three times. Okay, so, you know, we hear all these myths about most ultra wealthy individuals. Like, oh, but they took all this risk. They work so hard. They're the job creators. But above all, they're just smarter than you. They're, they're geniuses. Well, let me tell you more about Mr. Robert Belfer, and you tell me if you think he's a genius. So, first, he lost billions in the Enron collapse. And look, I'll be fair. This didn't really have anything to do with him because he inherited his father's oil drilling business. <laughs> so, but here's how it all worked out, okay? So, um, apparently, uh, like the company was that his father founded, the oil company that his father founded, was eventually uh, bought by Enron, but the Belfer family was the largest stakeholder. And so when Enron collapsed, they lost a lot, billions of dollars. Okay, so that's that's point number one. Um, the documents show that Belfer Investment Partners and Lime Partners LLC, two firms linked to the family business, held shares in FTX. So that's the most recent mm -hmm. issue. And its US subsidiary, FTX US, the two entities held a combined stake of $34.5 million as of early last year when they participated in an equity fundraising round according to court documents cited by Financial Times. And the, the other time that he was scammed was by Bernie Madoff. Of course. Billions of dollars. Uh, overall. So uh, look, there's a couple of fun things here. Uh, and all the stories today are about things that are in my book. But there, I have a section called the myth of meritocracy. So I want meritocracy to be real. I love the idea, right? But is it real? Well, let me give you some facts. Of the people that are on the Forbes 400 list of billionaires, 30% of them inherited at least $50 million. Okay, If my parents left me $50 million, all of a sudden I would have a lot of merit too. Okay, so but in our world, they really people go, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, they merit. Okay, so 20% of the list inherited all of their money. Okay, and did nothing with it. <laughs> they didn't add a penny to the money. Okay, so about half the list just flat out was given the money. But we need the myth of meritocracy so that you can dress up the injustice of economic inequality in the disguise of justice. Hey, the rich earned it, they deserve it. And if you're poor or middle class, you didn't deserve it because we have a meritocracy. So then wait a minute, the income inequality makes it seem like, oh, that's the fair thing. Right. The rich should dominate because they had all this merit. And you should be at the bottom because you don't have any merit, you weren't even born rich. <laughs> okay. But like the worst part about that myth is the feeling you get when you're approaching 30, it's the same feeling I got when I was approaching 30, where you realize that all that hard work actually didn't matter that much, <laughs> right? Like it mattered to some extent, I'm doing what I love for work. What I love most days, to be fair, it's an incredibly difficult job that's oftentimes very depressing. But nonetheless, like the idea I had of, oh my God, all you have to do is get an education, work really, really hard, and you're gonna be set, stay financially stable. You're not gonna have a worry about money ever again. And that's just not true. That's just not true. The hardest working people in the country are oftentimes the poorest. Let's just keep it real. Yeah, and it, look, guys, it doesn't mean you can't possibly make it. So, uh, for example, you just have to rob people. That's it. Yeah, legally through legal means. No, no, no. And, and honest yes. people have made it, including people in our families. Uh, and but did they? <laughs> well, I think so. So look here. Let me give you two quick examples. You know what I'm talking about, including uh, somebody in my family that had dealt with something along the lines of the Belfers. Okay, interesting. So my dad's side, dirt poor, no money at all. Uh, never had a toy, didn't have electricity in their homes. I mean, old school poor, right? 
Um, my mom's side of the family actually did relatively well for the small town in Turkey that they came from. There's money that was left over from like 500 years ago, but my grandfather had some of it still left 500 years later, right? And because they had land, and land is easy to purchase. It's good to have land. But when they move from the little town of Kittis in the in this near the Syrian border to the big city of Istanbul, they take it in the form of money. And my grandfather grew up wealthy, right? You know, within the context of that town. Mm. So he was always looking to get rich by not working. Okay, so I'm not saying he was lazy, like he was a dentist, he had a no, real but, profession. But Cenk, do you understand that he had the right mentality? <laughs> well, no, no, he, but, he but did hold and on. he didn't. No, but, but seriously, because I feel like the richest people have that thought process. Like, how can I make the most amount of money by doing as little as possible? Whereas everyone else was conditioned to think in order to get to that place, you gotta work really, really hard. Just work really hard. First one in, last one out. Yeah, but the problem with folks who don't want to work for it is that oftentimes they'll take too much risk because they just, when they see the money, they get too excited, right? So my grandfather fell for a lot of those tricks. And it looks like this guy does too. Like when you got your whole life is easy money and somebody says, hey, I've got easy money for you, he thinks, yeah, that's normal. No, right, and he's not thinking, oh, that's a scam. There's no way that that money's that easy. Think about how you treat money that was just given to you versus how you treat money that you had to earn through the hard work, right? Oh Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I can see myself getting real careless with money I didn't earn, money that was handed to me. And I would know because I was a teenager once that got, you know, Mm -hmm. Got an allowance, and I spent that money like it was nothing, right? Yeah. I didn't care. So, like, yeah, I mean, this guy has been perpetually trained. Like, it's it, it'll never end. Of course, he's going to invest it in stupid things like FTX and cryptocurrency, right? Yeah. Now you are absolutely right. On the other hand, my dad basically lived the American dream. He went from being that poor, right, to running a, a company here in America, running a company in Turkey. And 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 did okay, did pretty good. We had a nice house in New Jersey, and we got a good education. Feel terrific about it. Now, by the way, do you want to know why? Because my dad got a free college education in Turkey. If he had not gotten a free college education, we'd still be on the farm in southeastern Turkey. It was progressive principles in Turkey in the 1960s, which apparently they could afford, mm. but the richest nation on earth can't afford, right? That propelled that possibility of meritocracy, which unfortunately in America has been cut off a lot. And Anna, you're absolutely right. Since my dad earned it, every dollar was precious to oh, him. Oh yeah. And, and but he wouldn't do like normal investments because he's like, oh, stock market. Oh They're my going god. to rob you. Oh no way. Oh my god. I like. <laughs> we have the same dad. It's crazy because same thing with my dad. My dad, he refused to invest in the stock market. Because he said he doesn't trust the stock market. He even used the word evil once when he was talking oh, to me yeah, about yeah. it. All and Turkish immigrant parents were like, stock market, terrible. Yeah, my dad's you like- You go up, you go down, you're gonna lose all the money. No, but my like, <laughs> that's the thing about parents, right? Because you know, you're this little snotty nosed kid who just really <laughs> underestimates the intelligence of your parents. And then you grow up and you realize how incredibly enlightened and smart your parents are. So like my dad, he understood how the whole system works, like how providing returns for investors ends up screwing over workers and all that stuff. So he's like, I don't, he, I didn't, but he knew he needed to retire, right? And so he had to invest in something. So he invested in an apartment building, which he's about to lose because the moratorium is never ending and mom and pop landlords get zero help. And I know the left likes to equate corporate landlords with mom and pop landlords, except that's his retirement and he's screwed. So when you say he's made it, I don't think so. It's all relative, <laughs> of course. Yeah, because folks who made it on their own oftentimes are one mistake away from uh, or one bad occurrence away from losing it all. Uh, and yep. And and but that's what gives them caution. Whereas guys like Belford don't have that caution because they've been swimming in money their whole lives. That's why it's not an accident that he was involved in three different scams because he can't recognize a scam because he to him everything is easy money. Right, so every time he's surprised, like I don't know, I got easy money from my parents. I got billions of dollars for doing nothing. And I thought I was gonna get billions of dollars for doing nothing again. Look at the poor schmuck. He's, yeah. He looks happy though. Yeah. He looks happy. There's one last thing that's part of this. 
You know how we covered the story the other day of a woman that was involved in three different mass shootings, right? Yeah. There was one that was in two, and then there was another one that was in three, right? Because there's so many mass shootings. Well, this guy is kind of the equivalent of that with scams, mm. because now there's nonstop scams. But also, imagine being so wealthy that you could lose billions. You know, you can lose a ton of money three separate occasions and not be destroyed for the rest of your life. Yeah, you know why? Because he had a lot of merit. Mm, yep, the merit <laughs> saved him at the end of the day. That's right. His parents gave him a lot of merit when they passed away. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.